What's good? It's Kev here with KevWestBeats.com and I am very, very, very excited today. Um, if you guys ha can't see it on the screen, Predator is here. Um, the rack extension version by Rob Pop. And this is the rack extension I have been waiting for since Rob announced that he was going to do one. I kind of wish he would have done Albino, but I will settle for Predator. Um, because I've been very excited about this rack extension. I am glad to see that it's finally here. And on top of that, they've announced today the Mark II's for Machine. Now, it looks like a bag of Skittles if you haven't already seen it. I'm going to do another video talking about that. And I was already planning on buying Machine anyway, so I'm kind of excited um, about the Mark II for Machine. Because like, I was going to buy one next week anyway. But on to Predator. Um, you know, this is just going to be a quick review. I'm going to go over, um, mostly going to be presets because I know people really, really like their presets. So I'll play through some presets. But first I wanted to talk about just the layout. Um, and I've said this before, I'm not a huge fan of how they redid the um, layout of Predator for rack extensions. Now I know the STK or whatever it's called um, has certain limitations. I know that's also why Yuhi said he's probably not going to do a diva rack extension for a while. Um, let's just say they because it's two guys but if you look at this they got all the same stuff from the VST packed in here I don't own the VST so it's probably the first track extension I actually buy um, but everything here is so small because they had to fit it all in there and they really redesigned it and I think considering the um, limitations that it does have um, as far as the look as far as how small everything is I actually think Ra, uh, the guys at Raw Poppin did a great job with this. Um, it's three oscillator synth, um, wavetable synth. You have a nice long list of wavetables. And um, keep in mind, when I say wavetable synth, we're talking like a um, sampler. Basically, sampler is basically a wavetable synth, but this just has predetermined samples. And you see, you just have all this space for wavetables. We're at. And I think these are actually ones you can probably download or add. The Spec 73, a Special 73, that's a lot of wavetables. Three oscillators, um, you know, your usual octave, semitone, fine tune stuff, um, pulse wave modulation, and the speed, um, sustain, um, spread across the keyboard volume, you know, usual regular stuff. And then you even have some ring frequency modulation and pulse wave modulation on oscillator two and three. Um, two, one filter, or is, maybe it's, yeah, two filters, excuse me. Um, low frequency filter, low frequency oscillator filter, your amp, regular, regular stuff. You know, so you have most of your standard stuff here. As far as sound of this, I actually still kind of prefer Thor. If we're talking about just pure sonic tone. But I think Thor is actually one of the most slept on software synthesizers out there. Thor is so versatile. And I think Thor sounds great. You can argue, debate that all you want to. I think Thor is amazing. Um, one other thing that I don't like on back, you don't have all of the CV outputs that you used to have. You look on your output here, think you have an in and out, you have tuning, but you have analog drift here too, which is kind of cool. If you've never used the analog synth, um, sometimes the, um, it kind of introduced what I would call like a latency, where the audio actually kind of drifts a little bit and it's hard to keep it, everything in sync and in time. It's kind of weird to describe unless you've actually played with it. And I also like they put their credits back here. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Uh, John Ayer is the guy who I believe actually coded this. Like I said, again, did a great job here. Um, is it, overall, I think this is actually a really, really great graphic user interface outside of the things that are smaller and, you know, within the changes they had to do because I still think the VST looks much better. Um, now let's get into some patches. Uh, I'm not even going to really talk about these patches what uh, much. What I am going to say, though, is that since Predator doesn't have many onboard effects, in order to really, really get the, a great sound out of Predator, you are going to want to have to um, put some effects on there, which is fine. I was playing with it earlier, and I put the Echo on some stuff. I put an RV7000 on there, and it started to sound really good. Um, and then you even have the stuff like the Ubic A that I haven't tried yet, which is going to make it sound even better. I heard the Ubic, Ubic A is incredible. Like, the eyes haven't tried it yet. Um, but here we go. Let's go through some patches. Um, you see here you have a lot of patches. 
a ton of stuff. They really did their thing here with the sound design. It looks like they even teamed up with some other sound designers. Um, let's go through to a loved sound designer for the reason, guys, Bitly. Uh, let's see what he's done here. I'm gonna just play a little bit, see what we got going on here. That's kind of weird for me. The ARP is all over the place. Uh, let's try something else. I like that. I, I really, really dig that. Um, let's see what else we got. right there bass move three that's just crazy sound effects. <gasps> oh, excuse me. That's really cool. Bacon. <laughs> it's sizzling bacon. It's crazy. Oh, uh, let's see here. I like some of these effects. Like I said, this is probably going to be the first rack extension I actually buy. Um, just because there are so many cool sounds in here. Some percussion sounds. Drums there, there. Ooh, I love that kick. That's um, that's really hard hitting kick for the club. I love that. I might buy this just for these kick drums. I mean, I, I can make my own kicks, but I love that sound. Not, not so much. 
This can be tweaked. This probably sound all right. Just need a high pass filter on it. Two's got toms. That sounds like a way. Like that. I think I saw it anyways, but that's fine. A flutter clap, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, I'm really enjoying this. And then these are just presets. Like, I haven't even dug deep into the synthesis aspect of it. Um, let, me, let me find some, uh, ooh, keys. Get to a better octave. I don't like that patch for playing keys. Let's see. Not it. They're just sparking ideas. stuff in here man um Same with the effects too. Um, I'll show you. I'm gonna put the polarizer on here, and you can get some really cool, interesting tones. Did I not connect? I don't think I connected it right. Let me try again. Uh, creative effects, the polarizer. Compress that a little bit. Bring the power signal in. I didn't notice the delay earlier. Like, I thought this thing was actually pretty effects free, but I'm hearing the delay somewhere. Here we go, mono delay. Here we go. Okay, because we do have two effects panels. And, like, this is crazy. And as you see, I'm still kind of learning. I just, it came out this morning. Um, but overall, like I said, I really, really, really like this um, plugin. Ton of features, ton, ton of features here. Um, I was debating on waiting and seeing how this, the rack extension versus the VST played against each other. And I am glad I waited because I love this rack extension. Um, this, like I said, will probably be the first rack extension I buy. Um, probably, in, in the, like I said, it's $120. That's a full-time price. It's not going up, um, which I love too. And I will probably, I'm probably going to grab Machine next week. And then, you know, but my next purchase after that will 
probably be Predator. So, I hope you guys like this as much as I did. I think the synth is crazy. Um, please, of course, thumbs up and comment and subscribe. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter at Kev West Beats. And I'll see you guys next time, probably next week. Thank you for watching and check out KevWestBeats.com.